Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome in. I hope you're all excited to learn some tips and tricks about DocuSign today, just like we did on Monday. I see some familiar faces. Welcome in and good morning or good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Thank you, Davey. Welcome in. I'm just going to let you all come in and get settled. Good afternoon, Marianne. If you are joining and you are already settled, you have your audio, you have your camera showing, if you have that ability, thank you to those who are doing that now. I'm going to give you all a moment to go ahead and pull up that opportunity that we were working with on Monday. Uh, go ahead and set up if you're doing a split screen or if you have multiple screens. If not, and you learn better with watching the recording and then kind of practicing that way, either way, but that is one of the perks of us being live is that you're able to ask your questions live, uh, whether that be in chat. I will have um, another member of my team coming on in just a little while, and she'll be in chat just like um, we had on Monday. I see some more people. Joining. I'm just going to wait before I get started. And good morning, training rooms. I know I can't see your faces in there, but I do see a couple of you. Hi, Eddie. Okay. I see a pause in people joining. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. If I didn't have the opportunity to meet you on Monday, my name is Haley and I'm a success coordinator on the KWU tech team. Um, we specialize in tech training. We do small group trainings. We do one-on-one -on -one trainings. So this is definitely part of that in terms of getting you all familiar and comfortable with DocuSign. If you're just now joining and you have the ability to show me your face, please do so. That just helps in terms of interaction, knowing if you all are following along or maybe you're a little lost. here. I love the engagement. I'm so glad that a lot of people are joining. If you were here on Monday, we did go over um, basically an overview from start to finish, from creating an opportunity all the way to submitting those documents uh, to your market center. Today, we're going to lift the lid a little bit in terms of time-saving tips and ease of use. So just like on Monday, when you do have those questions, feel free to stop me, ask me out loud, and I would appreciate it in terms of just everyone following along if the questions that you ask are pertaining to that topic specifically. If you have other questions, please feel free to, um, you can lean on Davies and he can ask us or learn command at kw.com. So this isn't the only two times, hopefully that you're interacting with our team. This is just the first time. As we talked about on Monday as well, we do have a class called From Contract to Close. So if you weren't here on Monday or you would rather not watch the recording, recording and get that live training, you can always sign up for From Contract to Close. And that's going to be um, that level one. Now, level two is about diving into the details. So just like on Monday, we do have that level two that's always being offered. So just keep that in mind as well. If this is just the first time you're seeing it, you have plenty of other opportunities to see those tips as well. Claudia, great question. I'm going to go ahead and drop our link tree now in the chat for that level two DocuSign class. Thank you, Claudia, for your interest here. Um, Amelia, if we registered on Tuesday, do we have to again today with our name and info? So yes, if you, that was for that training specifically. And Meg, welcome in. I do see that she um, snuck in here. She's going to be uh, the other success coordinator who's going to be in chat primarily. And Meg, would you please drop that, uh, that form that they can go ahead and let us know who has attended today? Because that is important. We want to make sure that you um, do get any of the information that you're seeking. Um, good afternoon. So how do we access the recording later? So we will be sending that to um, your market center representative, which is 
Davies, I believe, Meg, correct me if I'm wrong, they will have access to this recording and then they can go ahead and show it to you all. Uh, now that Meg is here, I'm going to go ahead and, and pass off her letting people in so we can go ahead and dive into today's material. Hopefully, if you joined at the start of the call, um, you had a couple of minutes to go back to that demo opportunity that we saw um, that we were with last time, working with last time together. Um, if not, you can go ahead and just quickly create a contact and then quickly create another demo opportunity. Now, before I dive into what exactly we're covering today, do I have any last minute questions, comments, concerns that I need to address before we get started? No questions? That means we're ready to rock and roll and lift the lid a little bit on DocuSign. Woo! Okay, in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let's go ahead and dive in um, to see exactly what we're gonna be covering today. So this is going to be session two. Um, last time it was that flow that we went over. This time it's not gonna be so much as a narrative. It's going to be isolated tips. And we're gonna talk about the use cases and the why of when you should use some of those tips. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. As a reminder, we are on the enablement team with KWU. If you do have questions, and I know I shared that link tree in the chat, um, please reach out to us. Please sign up for our other classes that we have available to you. Uh, we want to partner together with you to adopt command or adopt DocuSign, whatever you're seeking to do for your business. So please don't let this be the last time that we see each other. Now, specifically for today, it's going to be interactive just like it was. So if you do have camera ability, if you do have microphone ability, feel free to speak up, feel free to ask those questions because ideally you're following along and doing what we're doing and understanding each of those tips as we go through them. So this is exactly what we're gonna cover. We're gonna go over static data form templates first. Essentially, that's a way where if you're noticing that you have the same information that you're having to type in over and over, transaction to transaction, can't I just make a preloaded template in DocuSign and then apply that information into my room? And remember, when you apply that information, it's going to go to the details of the room too. So we talked about how that documents tab and that details tab last time is kind of a, a fluid um, information share there. So this is a quick way to apply that information um, because I know none of you like dual entry. Um, if you do like dual entry, then feel free to ignore that tip. Uh, number two is in-person signing. So we had a couple of questions last time that we met in terms of, hey, what if um, they're not comfortable with e-signing? What if they would rather do an in-person signing? So even though it's DocuSign, even though it's still e-signing, there's a way that you can set up your envelope to the, where that, that person can sign in person. Uh, we're then going to go over emailing documents to the room. Um, so this is going to be, hey, I'm on the go. Uh, maybe I have a document or a form in my email. I have some kind of attachment that I want to be able to associate with a room. I don't have to create maybe multiple folders in my email or anything like that. I can just send it over to the DocuSign room, save me time and keep all of my documents in one spot. So we'll talk about that. Then we're going to talk about splitting and combining PDFs. So sometimes you send out documents and maybe they're given back to you in one big packet. Well, if you're thinking about those placeholders and what you need to actually submit to your market center, sometimes those signed documents do need to be split up. So we'll be going over that, um, how to split those or how to combine those PDFs back together. We're then going to go over voiding and correcting an envelope. So we joked uh, last week about hey, make sure everything is set up appropriately within your envelope before you hit that send button. We know though that mistakes do happen and I wanna be able to give you comfortability in terms of when can I just simply correct this envelope versus when you should actually void the envelope and start over. And then last but not least is what to do when things fall through. So unfortunately, some things do fall through when you're working with um, you know, a buyer or a seller and we don't want you to have to essentially make multiple opportunities, make multiple rooms uh, that can you know, get very tedious and frustrating. So we want to alleviate that and show you exactly what to do when things fall through. 
Okay, is everyone ready to go? I'm gonna just scan for faces. Eddie looks ready to go. Francie is looking ready. Oliver, are you ready to go? Yeah. He's ready. Okay, awesome. Mary Ann's with us. I see some familiar faces from last time. Carolina's ready. Okay, great. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna talk about static data form templates first. So all I'm gonna do is pull up my command screen and notice I'm already within the opportunity. I know last time a couple of you um, did not pick your checklist type. So make sure before we get started to go ahead and pick that checklist type. And I'm gonna lead on, lean on my residential listing document. Now, if you're using the same demo from last time, you're gonna see what mine says here. Instead of start transaction, you're gonna see go to transaction. That just means there's already a room made for this specific opportunity. Um, if you do see start a transaction, if you just made one, that's okay too. It's going to create a new room for you instead of diving back into your old room. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. I'm going to click on go to transaction. It's going to open up that DocuSign room and it will bring me to my documents tab. And don't worry if you haven't pulled any in yet. Mine is going to look a little bit different because I'm in a demo environment. Me in this documents tab here. So just as a refresher from last week, very quickly, um, Eddie, if I update information in my forms, where else is that information going to be updated? Comment. Comment. Well, okay, so it is a one way sync from command to DocuSign. But if I open up, if I bring forms and I open them up and fill in details, it's actually going to fall back to this detail. Oh, okay. So we kind of talked about, and this is y'all's preference. Do I want to update things within this tab by clicking on this edit pencil and filling things out? Or do I want to bring in forms into my room and update the details within? So still either way is going to be great. Um, right now, if you are following along, please go ahead and bring in a couple of forms with static data. And when I say static data, I'm really referring to the information that's going to say consistent from transaction to transaction. transaction. Okay. So what's some, what are some pieces of information that you all are always typing in over and over again? Title company. Title company, absolutely. I don't want to have to put in my title company every single time. Marianne? Your brokerage. Exactly, your brokerage. Brokerage, title company. Another one I hear a lot is your agent license number. So think about the forms that have all that information because here's the thing with static data form templates is you don't need to make a static data form template for every single form. Instead, think of a form that has all of that information or most of that consistent information as your heavy hitter form, because whatever you make for that static data form template, you won't have to write uh, manually. But great, y'all are all um, on the same page in terms of what kind of information. So you should be thinking of a form that will have that consistent data. When you have that form, um, remember to bring those forms into your room. I'm just gonna go to my add button at the top right hand corner, click into DocuSign here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in a couple of other forms here. I know though, and that's the form that I already have in my room, that this release of earnest money, if I open it up, I have consistent data where it is. Oh, I'm sorry, Renee, did you have a question? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I was just asking if I could be let into the room. I have to sign in from another computer. You should. I'm be. waiting for the host. I think Meg is letting. I'm going to. Hey, yeah, Haley, it sounds like I, okay. my co-host was revoked. Can you give it back? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Apologies. I'm no, no I more. job a lot harder here. So no. sorry about that, Renee. <laughs> No worries. She will be able to. Thank you. Uh, no problem. I'm in. Awesome. Okay, great. Okay, sorry about that. So when you are looking at that data and you might have to kind of hover over just like I'm doing here, 
and to see exactly what's going to be consistent. You might be familiar enough with your forms where you're like, okay, here where it says room.details.listing.agent1 company, that's not something that you're going to memorize, but you know, once you get to this point that you're going to have to put in maybe your, uh, your uh, broker office address or something like that. So at this time, go ahead and find a form, open it up, and instead, just find that information. You don't have to type anything, just know where that's going to go. Because the next step is creating the static data form template. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask this out. I know, though, where that information needs to go. In order to actually create the static data form template, I'm going to navigate up to the top here, this fourth tab, into My Docs. Once you navigate into My Docs, you'll see a third tab that says Form Templates, and that's what we want to click into. Where are my form templates? This is where you're going to go anytime you do want to create one. Now, it is important to keep in mind that this isn't something that you can share out between team members or people that you're working with. Each person does need to create within their DocuSign account their own static data form templates. Now, it is important to note as well that you can, not saying that you all will, but you can make multiple form templates for one form. Can you think of an idea of why we would want to do that? Why would I create multiple for one form? What if I'm working on a different side of the transaction? What if I need to apply that information on the seller side instead of the buyer side instead? Or what if I chose to make a static data form template for when I give out referrals or when I receive them? Sometimes you're going to be on the referral side. Other times you're going to be on the referee side. So you do have the ability to create multiple for the same form, just depending on where on the form you need to place that data. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is come to the top right hand corner, click on create form template. And it's going to look pretty similar to what it does when you're actually in the room. You're just going to pull in whatever form you're wanting to. So I'm going to say, OK, maybe from a form group or if you don't have a form group, that's quite all right. You can pull from a library and then it's going to give me my choices here. So go ahead and find your form. I'm going to find my release of earnest money because I know that that's the form that has the static data from transaction to transaction. Once I have that form, I'm going to click on use. And now notice it looks pretty similar to what it does when you're in a room and you open up a form. Now, if you're thinking about making multiple static data form templates for one form, a tip would be maybe to come up here and click into this pencil and title it list side, buy side, whatever is going to make it easier for you. Because when you're in the room, you only have titles to go off of when you're applying a form. So for this one, I'm just going to put dash and then put two nine for today's date just to show you all. And you do have to click on this little green check mark. I don't know how many times I've done that. <laughs> I think that I've titled it and I don't click essentially the save button there. So that's what you're going to want to do first. And then go ahead and find where that static data information is going to be and cross your fingers that this is the last time you're going to have to type it. So go ahead and put in that. I'm, I'm going to just going to use this broker, maybe company here, and maybe that's the title. I'm going to go ahead and put in the address of the office. And make sure to hover over and see, okay, address two, that's going to be suite, you know, 200, for example. Make sure to put the city and the state in the right boxes here. So I'm going to go ahead and say Austin, Texas and my zip code. If I had, you know, agent license number up here or something like that, go ahead and put in all of that static data that you're going to want to apply. And remember, because of those little yellow labels, it's going to apply to any other form that has that label and the anywhere the details are that it has that label. Y'all feeling good? How, how are we doing with our static data form templates here? Giving y'all a chance to catch up. Once you put in that static data, you're just going to hit save and close. 
now it's able for us to use back in our room. So now that I have that, all I'm gonna do is navigate back into the room. Back into my documents tab. And now I'm going to find the form that I just made that static data form template with. So we did our release of earnest money. I'm going to right click. And now notice I have apply form template. Now, this might seem a little bit um, confusing, like, oh, what if I accidentally apply the wrong template to the wrong form? I will give y'all um, at least a little bit of ease on that is you can't do that. So I did bring other forms into the room just to show you that I, if I were to right click on one that I didn't create a form template for, notice that I can't apply the form template. So you can't accidentally do it on the wrong form, but it's important to title because you could accidentally post it on the wrong side when we were talking about different ways of doing that. So I'm, all I'm gonna do is right click, apply form template. It's gonna have me select, make sure that's the one I wanna use, and then I'll go ahead and hit apply. Now, when I open up the form in my room, I'm going to have that information that I put when I made that static data form template. Now, that is the process to use when you are creating one. I will say that now any other room that I go into, all I have, I can actually bring in the form and the template at the same time, and there's an option to do so. So you don't always have to bring in your forms, right click, apply form template. You'll notice now that I have this form template, it will say, like, bring in the form with the template. So that's even going to be a faster way to go ahead and do that. I'd love to hear your feedback on this feature. How are we feeling? Excited? Confused? Comfortable? Marianne, is this something that you see yourself using? Yes? Awesome. What about you, Pierre? Is this something that you could potentially see yourself using in the future? Absolutely. Thank you. Let's save you all time, right? Eddie, what about you? Are you going to save time with this? Yes, but I'm a little confused. <laughs> where, where did you get your fo the form that you were using? So mine is going to be a demo form. Um, I I uh, I have a, a demo DocuSign account. Ah, yours are, okay. Yours are going to be whatever forms that you have just pertaining to your market center, essentially. Ah, okay, okay. That's what I'm yeah, you're not going to see exactly mine, unfortunately. Okay. And I do see a hand raise in KWMC587. How can I help you all, Computer Lab? Yes, I have one of our agents here that had a question. So I had a question. You have documents in your folder, I guess. Can, I, can you try to add the same document twice? So can I add the same form? Let's say I want two notices of uh, withdrawal. Can I do that or you won't let me do that? No, you're only going to be able to add one form. Um, and, and, and why would you want to add two of the same form? Well, I had a, I had a, I wanted to recreate what I did. So I wanted to have a reference point. So I didn't want to overwrite it. Okay. So, so you were just trying to follow along and then it wasn't letting you once you've archived it. Then I archive it and it was the same thing. It wouldn't let me upload it archive now what you can do you can't bring in the same form twice but if you archived it um you see right here under like messages and envelopes it says active documents if you click on that and go into your archive you can unarchive the document and get it back in here so you can play with it a little bit and i can and i'm happy to just show you all what that looks like too if, um so she said that she archived it so all i'm gonna do is right click archive and it's going to leave my room. Now, if I were to try to add that document or that form back into here, it's not going to let me. It's going to have a little um, kind of looks like a, a prohibited sign. So what what you're going to have to do if you fall under that is go into archived documents, right click and then unarchive the document. It'll come back into your room and you'll be able to play with it. Does that help? Okay, sorry, I see that y'all. Yeah. She was trying to get around it. 
So she was trying to get around, see if there was a trick to having two documents with the same name downloaded and kept in the um, room. I don't know of that trick so far. And I think it's just to, to keep all of the details because remember all the details are mapped. So if I have two different release of earnest and I have two different listing one companies and two different agent, like it's, it's going to be confused and not know what label to bring into the envelope. So I don't think that's anything you're going to be able to do. Got it. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. It's going to scan for faces here. Make sure we're ready to rock and roll for our next tip, which is going to be setting up in-person signing. We're going to set up in-person signing next. So really, if you're, you know, physically at a closing table with your clients and want to get all of the documents signed using the same computer, or you can use an iPad without having to send multiple emails, you can set up in-person signing. We also talked uh, last time we met about how, you know, some people might be scammed, uh, you know, frequently, and they feel, you know, a little squirrely about signing in person. So this is a way to essentially create trustworthiness. Hey, come on down to the office. We'll go ahead and sign it all here. So what we're going to do on the rooms side, which is the only side that we were on last time, is we're going to go ahead and create our envelope. So when you're first setting up in-person signing, it's going to be the same way that you create an envelope for an e-signature at first, and then I'll show you all where we kind of divert. Um, so by creating that envelope in your room, you're going to ensure that the signed documents uh, will drop into your room once your in-person signers have all signed. So once everyone signed, all of these documents, just like if you were to send it out on an e-signer, are going to come back into your room and they're going to be signed for you. So you don't have to download them, re-upload them into the DocuSign room or anything like that. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. I'm going to pick on um, these two documents. So if you want to bring in a couple more documents um, as a recommendation, maybe click on shorter forms to use because you're going to be the one going through all of this um, just for demo purposes. So I'm just going to attach a couple of forms by clicking on them at the top left hand quarter, corner. And then I'm going to lean on my slanted pin to create an envelope. So I'm going to create that envelope. I know we went over last time in terms of make sure to title your envelope something that you can come back to. If you leave it, please DocuSign, you're going to have a lot of envelopes called please DocuSign that's going to be really easy to get confused. Um, so maybe here I want to say uh, listing. We talked about how this is basically your manila folder um, for your label here. I'm going to say listing um, ROE for release of earnest money and then NOW for notice of withdrawal. Last time also we talked about how important it is to lean on pre-tagged roles when you're adding recipients to an envelope. So that's exactly how I'm gonna add my recipients now. I'm gonna click add recipient. And I'm gonna click into pre-tagged roles. Now, because it's a, a demo and I'm not sure exactly what you used as that fake name, go ahead and just bring in the signers you wanna use. And then if you want to, you can change um, anything. So I'm gonna pick two people uh, just to show you all what it looks like to have two people sign it. If you just wanna do one, that's completely up to you. So my seller one I know is going to be Harry Skiles. So I'm just gonna pick his name here. And I'm going to just choose myself as seller two here just for today. So I leaned on my pre-tagged roles. Eddie, do you remember why pre-tagged roles are so convenient? Nope. No? So no. pre-tagged roles, you're the perfect, it's like I plugged you in the audience. Pre-tagged roles, y'all, remember, is going to save you a lot of time because instead of having to manually map the envelope once you're inside the envelope, this is essentially creating, if you're thinking about um, like a physical stack of documents with a bunch of stickies, it's doing that digitally. So seller one, you need to sign here, 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 instead right. of Eddie okay, dragging and dropping those signing uh, fields. Does that make sense? Yes, I remember now. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add selected here. So I'm adding my recipients. Um, 
If you do have questions in terms of order and uh, the functionality here, please review the video that we went over last time. We talked about how you can rearrange. Oh, yeah, what yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do is make my seller to number two, because when we do the in-person signing, I do want to indicate um, who needs to sign what first. And Haley, a quick question too. If they're in a situation where they might have a number three and a number four. four. It's as easy as adding recipient, correct? To add in more people? Absolutely. So they can add recipient and either go through pre tag roles again, right? And then and if it's someone that's not like if it's something and I know last time someone brought this up of what if someone just needs to receive a copy of it at the end of it, maybe they don't need to sign, they might not be in your room so they might not even have a pre tagged role. Absolutely, you can come and say instead I want to do email address. Okay, what's that person's name Meg I'm going to pick on you for this. <laughs> and then maybe Meg just needs to receive a copy when this is all said and done. Does that help. Yes, I think right now they just uh, it might be confusing like, well, I know these two are in here already pulled through command, but now I need to add more. So I want to make sure we're highlighting as simple as add recipient and then being able to pull that information either over through pre tag roles or adding it in. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks, Haley. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and exit this out just because it'll it'll elongate it once we're in there. But that's yeah, you can always add people from email addresses. We just want to be able to save you time. Marianne. Um, so if you already have someone in like a pre tagged role, but you like forget because you have like, you know, a whole Rolodex of people, can you does it complicate things if you manually enter in the email address? Like, does it add like another contact? Is that like kind of how it works or? No, it's just the, the difference between just um, adding the email address is if they have to sign it, you're going to have to manually drag and drop where they need to sign. So it's not going to, it's not going to mess up anything. It's just, it's going to create more uh, legwork on your end. Francia, um, I just want you nodding. I want to make sure. Yeah, I understand. I didn't, that was a question I wanted to ask, so. Okay, great. Yeah. Ask. <laughs> Absolutely. Those pre tagged roles, we're just leaning on heavy because we want this to be the most efficient way for y'all. But we understand that you have those one offs or so and so needs a copy or so and so needs to view. Um, so you do have that freedom. Absolutely. Okay. So once we've added our pre tagged roles, we've changed our envelope name, um, we've written a message to our recipient, which if it's in-person signing, you won't need to because <laughs> you're going to be walking through. So I'm going to just skip that part. And this might seem a little counterintuitive, um, but bear with me, y'all. We're going to come up here and actually hit save and close. So we're going to save and close that envelope. And now it's going to be in a draft status. Now, why are we saving and closing our envelope and leaving it as a draft if we need to still in person sign it? Because if you think about the actions on this side, we didn't see in person signer. We saw signing, uh, viewing, copying, but we need to actually switch over to the e signature side so that we can open up our in person signing. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we've set up our envelope. We've saved it as a draft. Now I'm going to come up to my initials, or if you're fancy and you have a picture, go ahead and click on that at the top right hand corner. And then we're going to switch to e signature. And again, we're only having to do this because that action is not available yet on the room side. We're crossing our fingers and hoping that that will be a change coming soon. So you won't have to do this. But in the meantime, this is the process. So I clicked on my name, I'm switching to e-signature. Now I'm gonna click into manage because this is where you can actually manage your envelopes. And I wanna ask y'all a question. And, and um, if you don't know the answer, just if you do try, <laughs> uh, do you know where I'm gonna find my envelope on, the, on this side? How could I locate the envelope that we just made? Search. Oh, I like that. That's out of the box, Marianne. Absolutely. Maybe so. Maybe we search it because we uniquely titled it and there's not a bunch of police doctor signs. Love that. But remember, y'all, we saved it as a draft. 
yeah. And that is not intuitive. That's why I'm kind of picking y'all uh, a little bit because it does take practice. Where am I, where am I going to find it? I'm in the signature. She told me to come over here. Where is it? So you're going to go into drafts and then you'll locate that envelope. So I have my envelope right here for Harry Skiles and myself, and you're going to click on continue. Now I'm in the e-signature side and it looks pretty similar to what it looks like when you're on the room side. However, when I click on needs to sign, notice I have something very specific that we need on this side and that's going to be in-person signer. So if both of the people are signing with you in person. That's what you're going to want to indicate here. You're just going to come down and say, all right, you're an in-person signer and you are an in-person signer. Notice as soon as I hit in person, now I have a host name and a host email. That's going to be you or whoever's iPad or computer. You're the one kind of facilitating this. So you're going to be the host of the in-person experience, essentially. You can think of it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my name. Notice it's already auto-populating because this is the account I have with DocuSign. So I'm going to label myself as the host. I'm going to make sure to change both of these actions to in-person signer if they both are in-person signing. And now I'm going to come up and hit next. Before I hit next, how are we feeling here? Okay. Feeling good? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I'm, this is essentially me jumping inside of the envelope now. So it looks very similar to how it does on that room side. This is where if I need to put in extra check boxes or radio buttons or anything special, this is where I want to make sure and add it before we actually start signing. So I'm just going to scroll through. I'm going to review. Okay, I, I know I have two in-person signers. Notice I have my information that I applied for my static data form template. All looks good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send. Now, instead of sending it off like it would when you're sending out an email, this is where you're going to set up that in person. So notice now it says, do you want to sign this document now? Sign now or sign later. Just want to pause and let y'all know, you know, you could this set up this at 10 a.m. The meeting's not until 3 p.m. So you can set up all of this on the front end so that you're ready to go when they're in front of you. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and hit sign now. So this is what it's going to look like when you're preparing. Maybe you have um, a laptop or an iPad that you're moving back and forth. It's saying that this DocuSign user has assigned you as the host for the in-person signing for Harry Skiles, because remember, he was signer one. So basically, it's just setting you up for success here. This is what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to pass controls. So in between each signer, it says, OK, pass control back to the host so no one can, you know, sign for anyone else or, you know, we're going to keep it compliant. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. This is essentially the directions for what you're about to do. And now it says, OK, host, pass the control to signer one, essentially pass it over to Harry. So Harry's going to get this. He's going to hit start. And it's going to be the same process as when they are signing this electronically now. They're going to say, all right, I agree to the terms of use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit this start button and I'm going to start signing. Remember, if there's a power of attorney or anything like that, that's where they can change this. Um, I've had some people instead like to draw their signature so that they know it was really them that did it. So just added levels of security. Um, but for today, I'm just going to go ahead and hit adopt and sign because I don't want y'all to see how terrible it is when I draw. Pierre? Yeah, hi, Haley. So is this all like um, iOS friendly? Like we could be using um, an iPad to be doing this? To make the to facilitate the passing around from one signer to another, I've done this on my um, laptop. That's a Mac. I've done this on my phone. That's a Mac. So yes, it's compatible with Android, iOS. Uh, should be good to go in terms of those platforms. Absolutely, I haven't seen anything in regards to limitations for each one or anything. Okay, great. Thanks. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and hit sign here. He's going to finish. And then I would recommend, you know, if you are signing with your clients, go ahead and have them put in their email so that they get a copy of it. You can always send them a copy of it if you want to. 
I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Notice there's a print button here. If you're using printing in your office, you can go ahead and give them a hard copy if you want to, just showing you all of your um, potentials here. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And then it says, OK, pass the control back to Haley Winfrey because I was labeled as the host. So then they're going to sign, decide how they want to copy, pass it back to the host. Now, the reason why that I picked two in-person signers instead of just one is because notice it takes you here. You're thinking, um, where is the, how does the other person sign? So you're actually going to go back to manage. And now the envelope is not in a draft status because we hit sent, right? So now I'm going to go to my sent. And now it's letting me know, hey, half the envelope is done. Not everyone has signed it. So then now that second person can sign. So same thing. I'm just going to come back. We're going to pass that control. And I'm just going to go through this part quickly here. But I wanted to have some signed documents. So I'm going to adopt and sign. And then I'm going to finish. And then who remembers where our signed documents are now? Renee, do you remember where our signed documents go back to now that we've completed our in-person signing? I do not, but I'm guessing maybe the inbox. I don't know. Hey, thank you for that guess. Love the participation. It's actually going to go back into the rooms though. We don't have to manually move any of this, just like it is with e-signature. I'm going to click back into my initials, switch back to my rooms, and now all of my signed documents are going to be in that room we were working out of initially. So just going back to my room. Pierre, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't put my hand back down. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> no worries. I'm going to go back to my, uh, my documents. And now notice I have my signed documents as well as that certification for my in-person signers. So I know there's a little back and forth, but that's how you're going to be able to utilize that feature currently. And Haley, we've got a couple of questions in chat that I think are really great. So Susan asks, what if they want to read the document before signing? <laughs> so... Yes, so that, that process I did go through quickly in terms of this is how they actually sign. But yes, in that moment, please allow them time to read through what they're signing. Now, it does make it, you know, digitally easy because it kind of goes, okay, here's the next place you sign. Here's the next place you sign. But please let your consumers know that they should be reading their contracts prior to signing them. So that, yeah, they can read them on the spot with you. Awesome. And then I like this one. If we just want to print and have it for them to sign on paper, as that is their preference, will we just print and download the forms from the room versus creating an envelope? Well, if you want now, the only thing with doing that is then the documents, the signed documents won't go back to your room if you don't set up that envelope. You would have to scan, like if you end up printing something, just hard copy and you get those wet signatures, that's when you would need to, you know, scan them into the computer, upload them to the rooms. So I would say this is a lot less painstaking. Now, if they do, um, Maybe, maybe you even print off like what the contract is and let them look over it, but then they really sign it digitally or something like that I would recommend just for you in terms of your ease of use. Yeah, I, yeah I think so, Haley. And we're going to talk too about emailing into the room or doing things in the room in a little bit. So maybe that will click for, for this person a bit more too, um, because we know there are people who like the wet signatures. There are people who like paper. And we can help you kind of figure out if that is the case, how to quickly get it back into DocuSign. Absolutely. And great segue because that's our next tip. <laughs> Except Renee, did you have a question? I just had a comment. Um, I'm really excited about this. Like As I think of it, um, I can imagine like at a listing appointment, setting it up prior to going and then having them, you know, printing out a copy, maybe highlighting some important parts that they can read through and then allowing them to both sign in front of you. And the benefit of that is that they're also learning how to use this. So when we get our offers, it'll, you know, it'll be an easier process for them, I think, you know, while I'm there. So I'm happy to try this. Thank you. Okay. 
Love yeah. that feedback. And um, and and that really helps, you know, in terms of the masterminding going on in this room right now. Maybe you help a couple of your uh, colleagues' light bulbs go off a little bit there. I love your white glove service. Maybe I'll print it out and highlight some. I think that's great, Renee. Absolutely. And it looks like Marianne uh, liked that as well. Okay, any questions, comments, concerns about in-person signing before we move on to emailing into the inbox and emailing into the room? Just gonna scan here. Susan, are you feeling strong? Um, sorry, I have a question. So could you show us again how to do the second signature? I got the first signature, but the second signature you go to the envelope sent, and after you're in there, what do you have to do? Yes, so you're going to go um, into sent, and then it'll say one of two signed, and then you're just going to click into it to continue signing. So if you didn't pick two signers, you won't see that right now. Like if you just had one person selected for your demo, I went ahead and did two so I could kind of show y'all where that, where that lived, but it's going to be on top. So it's going to be your most recent. It'll have a green bar that's only halfway completed saying, hey, you only have half of your signers done. Did that help? Or is that not what you're seeing? Just let me know if I can go back and show. Oh, it looks like she's getting help there. Okay, let me know if we need to go back and show. Happy to circle back around at the end as well. So I want to make sure everyone feels comfortable. Okay. Yeah, I just had a quick question, oh. Haley. Sorry, um, from Erin. She just said, how would we go back to initial or make changes? So I think we're talking about in the envelope. I just want to be clear if Erin mentions, like, if we wanted to go back into the envelope and make changes, which, again, I think we might talk about in a little bit how to correct or avoid an envelope. But I just Exactly. Um, yes. And Erin, great question in terms of, you know, correcting or voiding. So, you know, especially if you're set, setting up I mean, in this circumstance specifically, I would say void and start over, especially if they're in-person signing, because it's not like you can add something else and then send it to them. I would say do all of that editing. And notice we jumped inside the envelope before we hit that send. So on that uh, e-signature side, you still do have the ability to do all of the edits prior to sending it out or prior to in-person signing just like you would the regular one. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Why they advise and they can do, listen, we are different people than um, Aaron, after we do correcting and voiding, please let me know yes. if you're still confused and I'll be happy to, to walk through any of that that you want to. Well, actually, it wasn't my complete question. My complete question oh. is once uh, the sellers and the buyers both signed and then usually there's always a change or you have to do an initial so how do you send it back to the sellers to initial like a change on the document that's already been signed that's all I wanted to know uh, and that's that's common practice to change envelopes after it's being sent to change the envelope yeah, you're making you're making changes to the editing fields after you're sending out the envelope. Yeah, I, I would say just in terms of your like workflow and ease of use that you would try to not have that be commonplace um, because otherwise you're going to have to be correcting your envelopes constantly. And in terms of what you correct and how you correct it, especially if it's an editing signing field, that's not something that we would recommend doing in terms of compliance. Haley? Michelle? I think it's because, oh, hold on. I think I lost you. Uh, due to the echo, she's going to just type it in chat for us. Okay. And sorry, there's like 47 chats, so I didn't know. <laughs> no, no, no worries. And oh, and Joelle said, great point, Renee. So I'm wondering if. That was to Renee's awesome aha about ease oh, of use okay. in, with the seller and getting the seller prep for continuing with digital DocuSign, right? Okay, good. Just making sure I didn't uh, miss a lot of things going on there. Let me, um, 
I'm happy to answer and let me know when they're uh, ready, Meg. I'm just going to go ahead and dive into um, the inbox portion so we can go ahead and dive into that. We will go back to correcting and voiding though. So if we need to tease anything apart, I'm here for y'all. Yeah, she just oh, put it, it in like, chat. Okay, here we go. Um, after the contract is signed, sometimes a small change needs to be made, like earnest money or inspection. Normally, we would strike out and have initials done. So you can resend envelopes once they've been signed. That is something that you can do. And then manually drag and drop where they need to sign them. You would just add them as another recipient on the envelope. So it is possible. It's just when I was saying, hey, maybe that's not a good time and good like workflow to use all of the time. Is it because it just makes it a little more tedious on y'all? But if everyone knows that we're signing and everyone's compliant and they know that they're going to do it, then that's totally above board and okay. 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 I'm going to go ahead and transfer into emailing into the inbox and the room. So essentially, this is a great tip if you're wanting to keep all of your documents in one place, which is DocuSign. Um, there are a couple of different ways that you can email into the room. There's three, and we're going to go over all of those. So before you can talk about emailing into the room, I just want to make sure that you all know your email address for DocuSign. Um, so what we're going to do is click on the initials at the top right-hand corner. And this time, in, instead, we're going to go into preferences. And this is also where, uh, just keep in mind that you can change things like, you know, how often you're notified. You know, I know that DocuSign is really email happy, so you can always go in and kind of adjust here um, what you want emails on, what you don't want emails on. What we're going to focus on, though, today is going to be the inbox details. So mine says Haley.Winfrey at mail.docusign.net. Um, if you haven't changed yours before, it's going to be a little more unfriendly, I would say. Um, it's going to have a bunch of numbers at the back end. So I'd recommend if you're following along right now, just to make it more user friendly, if this is something that you're going to be using, um, maybe just your first name dot last name or whatever you want to put there. And then you're just going to click on this save changes button. So I'm going to give you all just about 10 to 15 seconds to go ahead and do that. Okay. Once you've changed your email, um, now we're going to go ahead and dive into this inbox here. So this is where anyone can send you attachments and specifically attachments that you want to go ahead and add to a room. So this is just your inbox. This is just level one. We are going to talk about converting documents in just a moment. But if you want something sent to you that's an attachment, this is where it's going to come. It's going to come to this inbox right here. Notice I do have my email address at the top left-hand corner, so you don't need to necessarily have it memorized. I know it's not very friendly still at mail.docusign.net. What I'm going to go ahead and do, though, is copy paste this in, because if you all want to practice, which you are highly encouraged to do so, you can go ahead and practice by sending me attachments. And how do I send someone an attachment? Nothing fancy has to occur whatsoever. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is pull up my email here. And I'm going to create or compose rather, I'm so sorry, I'm, it's coming on my other screen here. Um, I want to show you all, here we go, new email. So this is what you'll do. All I'm going to do is paste in my email address if you want to use mine or if you want to use yours, either way. You're going to go ahead and make it a subject. So I'm just going to put, you know, attachment for um, Harry Skiles. Maybe I wanted to send something and put it into the room here. And now all I need to do is add that attachment. So I'll go over to my attachments here. I'm going to um, browse my computer and I'm going to find uh, maybe this financing pre-approval or any of these, maybe lead-based paint, whatever that is here. So all I've done is attach my attachment, copy pasted my email address, and I'm going to send it over into the inbox. So I'll hit send. 
I'm going to wait about 20 seconds and then I'm going to refresh my screen. Who is, is anyone sending me something as well? Can you can you repeat that again? How Eddie? to send yes, how to send the, that email? Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and just um so I'll bring this over as a new email, Eddie. Okay. All I'm going to do is copy paste my email address in here. So if you change yours to, you know, eddie.montez at mail.docusign.net, go ahead and just put that in there. And, and nothing special is happening here. You can, you know, if you leave this subject blank, it'll say no subject. It'll still go ahead and follow through. The important thing to note here is that it's attachments specifically. So PDFs. Um, not just, you know, a message, which we're going to go over how to convert that in just a moment. And then from here, all I'm going to do is attach that attachment, essentially. Uh, okay. All right. So nothing fancy. I'll go ahead and send it. Renee, did you have a question? I did. Sorry. Going back to, how did you say to change the email address? That's oh, in the yeah. inbox section, but what do we do? Yes, so you'll just go to um, your initials to preferences and then um, on the left hand side it'll say inbox details. And then you shouldn't have to do anything to change it, you can literally just touch what it has and backspace it. Thank you so much. Absolutely and then make sure to save it, <laughs> of course. So now I think it's been enough time i'm going to refresh here and i'm going to see what other things I have awesome. It's letting me know I have this little new banner here. Notice I have my little notification, just like command. <laughs> and now how do I get this information into the room? So from here, you can select your documents. I'm gonna go ahead and just pick on this one here. And notice I have my toolbar that I can move to any room that I want to. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over active rooms, and I'm going to uh, hover over Harry Skiles because that's the room that we've been working out of. And all I'm going to do is now move that document. And now it's going to be found in the documents tab of that room. Notice it's completely moved out of here. Now that's going to be level one in terms of emailing into the room. Are you all ready for level two, Marianne? Um, yeah, sorry if you already mentioned this, but the purpose for doing this is if you like the lead based paint document, is that like if it's not already in DocuSign and you're importing it? Absolutely. Okay. So this and, might be, oh, I'm sorry, you go ahead. Um, and then also like if you were to have like a wet signature contract, then you import it this way as well. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Perfect. Absolutely. Francia, did you have a question as well, ma'am? I just want to make sure. No, 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 I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So if we, yeah, if you want all those documents in one spot, uh, this is going to be a great just, all right, let's get it in there. Let's move it over into our room. Now, this next little piece is actually going to be more convenient. <laughs> so what we're going to go ahead and do now is go to the room that you want the document to appear in. So I'm going to hop, I'm going to lean on my Harry Skiles still. And this next piece here, and notice when I hover over this ID number right under the name, copy and paste this room ID number into your email subject in order to send documents into this room. So essentially, if I want to skip that choose, choose, inbox, you know, active room, that kind of thing, this is the workflow I'm going to do instead. So same thing, let me just pull up my email. I'm still going to put in just my two here for my DocuSign email address. But this time, and I'm just going to move this over to my other screen real quick, I'm going to copy this whole piece here, starting with the pound sign. I'm going to copy it into the subject of my email. And then all I'm going to do now is pick on another attachment to go ahead and use. So maybe this exclusive listing. And this is going to prevent you from having to move it from the inbox to the specific room. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send. I'm going to go back to my documents tab and I'm going to cross my fingers. 
Sometimes it does take about 30 seconds. Just when you might think it's not gonna happen, it does happen, I promise. So let me just refresh one more time. We can take a look at it because I do have a third level to show you all. Let me refresh one more time. I do wanna see it. And that third level is going to be converting, here it is, converting email threads into an attachment so that DocuSign can pick it up. Why would I want to send email threads into DocuSign? Well, what if something falls through? Or, you know, what if there is some email correspondence that you kind of want to keep in your back pocket in case, you know, for compliance purposes? We always want to make sure that we have our documents. Instead of having to create maybe another folder, an email, or another folder on your desktop about this one specific transaction, why not have that email thread in your DocuSign room with the rest of the transaction? So this isn't something that you might have to do all the time, but I do want to make sure that you have this tip at your fingertips. So in order to do that, we're, this time we're going to skip the inbox and we're going to convert our email thread into a PDF. I'm going to go back to my trusty compose one more time. I'm going to um, choose that email address. I'm going to go ahead and still paste the room ID because I don't want to have to move it from the inbox. But this time I'm going to space and then pound sign PDF. Now I'm doing it and that is telling DocuSign that you're converting, converting, sorry, this email thread into a PDF so that DocuSign will take it. Okay. But this is an important email thread. Um, that you would like to keep. I'm in a meeting. Okay. How do we feel about this part before I go ahead and hit send? Just want to make sure. Marianne. Sorry, so many questions. No. Um, okay, so will, would you like copy and paste an email thread or like could you forward an email thread? You can forward an email thread, but when you forward the email thread, Marianne, make sure to change the subject. And some like on Outlook, I know it's a little easier to do than Google. If you're using Google, there is a spot to do that. You just have to hit like a down arrow to change the email subject. That would be the only caveat. You should not have to be copy pasting. Great question. You can forward this over. And I'm not going to attach anything because this time we don't have anything to attach. This would be forwarding it over. Absolutely. But it, I do have to have that now. I do want to let you know I set it up this way, but you can still, you know, have an email subject in here. If this, maybe this was a, um, Meg, I'm going to pick on you, Behan, you know, fell through, whatever that is here. You can still have a subject in here. You can even put the subject in the middle of these two if you want to. I just wanted to show you all, you definitely have to have those two pieces of information. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit send. Now we're going to give it about 10 to 20 seconds to show up within my room, and it's going to be that converted document. If you don't put that pound sign PDF, it will not come through. Now, what's pretty cool in terms of what DocuSign, like if I don't send something that's compatible with DocuSign, I'll get an email saying this was not sent appropriately. So there's no guess and check necessarily of what went through and what didn't, because if you get an error message, kind of like if you have like a wrong email address, It'll do a bounce back. That's essentially what DocuSign does as well. And here we go. I have my converted PDF here. I have my subject line. And this is what's going to look like just a flat PDF when you're in here. Okay. How are we feeling about emailing into the room? Not something I might use, something I might use all the time. Holly, how do you feel about emailing into the room? More confident? Hopefully not less confident. Is it something y'all never seen before? No? Okay. 
Okay, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and move on down the line unless Meg, is there anything I should be paying attention to there? Um, let me see if there was one question. I think KW Legacy just put in chat, can I do this forwarding the email? And I think we've answered that, but let us know Legacy if, if we misunderstood or anything needs to be cleared up. Uh, yes, Aaron, absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> oh yes, KW Legacy said yes. Thanks. We've got Aaron say I like emailing in the room. Yay! And it looks like Joel's good. No questions there. Yeah, this is a great functionality. And like we were saying, if somebody prefers that wet signature, cool. We can go ahead and email that into the room after scanning it. Make it simple if need be. Absolutely. And now I know this isn't a training for that, but just if y'all are thinking, if y'all are really dealing with wet signatures a lot of time, there are free apps on your phone that you can take a picture of the document. So you don't have to use a real scanner if that's what y'all are using. Or if you want to use a real scanner, that's fine. But they do have free apps that do that for you now. Just letting y'all know. Okay. So the next topic that we're going to go into is splitting and combining PDFs. Why do we want to do that? Remember all of our placeholders. I'm just going to navigate to command really quickly. When you get things signed, you do have to upload them in the proper placeholder here. So if you were, maybe you sent off, I've heard agents tell me, I sent it off to the buying agent, for example, a bunch of forms, but I need to upload them back in here with everyone's signature, but they sent it back to me in one big packet. How do I split that up? So that's what we're going to go over now. And then the flip side of that, of combining documents, if you choose to. Now, it's specifically splitting and combining PDFs. I want to highlight that. You can't um, combine forms. It's not going to let you. And you can't split forms. Now you can take a form and split it, but it'll be split as a PDF. It won't then be a signable form. So that's why we're kind of focusing on those PDFs because they do come back um, such that you can split them up into however you want to. So in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and click into, uh, let me see if this one actually has, oh, this one only has one, all of my, all of my examples today were only one document because I was trying to make it easy on us. Um, let me see here. Is this one multiple? Here we go. So for example, this exclusive listing, what I'm going to go ahead and do and say this is something that it was a signed document with multiple pages and you needed to go ahead and split it up. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just right click on the document and click split. Now, in terms of the safeguard, you're not going to mess up anything when you split documents because it keeps the original copy as well. So even if you mess up splitting this and you have to go back and you get rid of those other documents, that's quite all right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is say, um, for example, what if I was splitting it up for the placeholders? I'm going to go ahead and title this first split listing document. So I'm going to say maybe um, listing doc. And I'm going to tell DocuSign, the listing doc is pages one and two. So I'm going to put one to two is the listing doc. For whatever reason, if you need to repeat a page or anything, uh, if you do need to reuse a page, you can do so as well. So I can say maybe split number two. Um, this time I want to include page two. And just to let you all know, I'm, I'm actually not going to type. You can just select them like this as well. So you don't have to type it in. You can just select the pages that you want to use if you're more of a visual person that way. And also notice, though, when I select the pages, it automatically puts it in chronological order. So it doesn't have to be. You can come in here and you can... I'm going to say split number three. You can reorder your pages. You just have to do it uh, by typing it in. So for example, if I want page five and then four and then one, I can go ahead and do that. I just have to type it in that way. So I can reuse. I won't break anything by splitting because I have my original document and I can change the order of my splits. We feeling good about this part? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'm going to have my listing doc, my split number two, um, my split number three, as well as my original exclusive listing piece here. 
Now, you know, remember we talked about last time how it's going to be a lot easier for you all to uh, maybe then come up here, go to actions, do a signed listed doc folder so that it's easy for you to pull back into command. So all of that still applies. It's just before that part and you want to split everything up so you're ready to bring it back into command. On the flip side, let's say that um, a transaction is complete or let's just say your room looks like mine and you're feeling a little overwhelmed and maybe you want to combine all of the certifications that you've gotten signed. So that would be a good example. Maybe I want to come in and say, all right, this certification and um, maybe some of my uh, PDFs here, maybe this was an email thread and it had to do with before or after she signed, whatever the case is there, you want to combine the document so that it's more organized, you can do so here. So all I'm going to do is select whatever documents I want to. And then at my toolbar, I'm going to go ahead and click combine. Same rules apply from split to combine. I can come in here. I'm not going to lose my splits. It doesn't look like it here, but I can reorder my pages here. And then I'm just going to title it whatever I want that combined document to be. So even if I just say certs and emails, maybe I want to put all my certifications and all of my emails combined. I can go ahead and do that and hit save. And now I have my new document for my certs and emails as well as my um, my original. So even from here, I know we talked about it a little bit, but from here I could archive these and then I could just have my combined document if I want to. Okay, how are we Where feeling about- Where do they go after you save them? Do what? Where do they go after you save them? They're right here. This is the combined document I just made. They're, they're all right oh. here. And then these okay. are the splits that I made. Okay. Yeah, they're all together. It's just my room's getting a little messy. Apologies. But this is when, if you weren't here last time, this is when y'all would add that folder, drag and drop what you want. Even if you want all your splits in a folder, all your signed documents in a folder. What we recommended last time is having signed listed, signed under contract and signed closed because you know those are the folders you're going to lean on once you're back into command for that final piece of the puzzle. Okay. The moment we've all been waiting for. No, I'm just kidding. Erin, is she still on the call? I'd love to have her questions uh, once we get to this point. I don't, I don't know if I see her, but the next thing we're going to talk about is correcting and voiding an envelope. So we did talk about how important it was to basically focus on the envelope, make sure you have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted and everything else. We know, though, that things do happen, and that's quite all right. So in this example, what I'm going to do is just pick on a couple of documents. I'm going to quickly create my envelope and send it out. And then we're going to talk about the circumstances, basically what to do when. When in doubt in terms of compliance, y'all, lean on your market center. What are my best practices when something happens? On the DocuSign training, Haley said we can do that. Is that something I can do in our market center? I never want you to uh, you know, get in any kind of compliance trouble. We definitely want to make sure that y'all are um, doing great to go, essentially. So don't follow my example because uh, definitely come in here and uh, rename your envelope. I'm not going to do that right now, and I'm not going to change my message to my recipients. All I'm going to do is come in here and add my pre-tagged roles. So I have uh, maybe Harry, and I'll just use myself again for the second one. I'm going to add selected here. I'm going to hit next. So I'm going to jump in my envelope. Uh oh, I have not seen that before. Hmm. One moment, y'all. That just happened to me too. Oh, is DocuSign? Uh. Haley, if you get it again, let me screenshot and see if I can uh, go to our products people, okay? Yeah, thank you so much. If you'd screenshot that, that would be amazing. Apologies, I've never seen this before. I've been working in DocuSign for about a year now um, and I've never gotten it. So they might be- I thought it was my connection. You thought it was your connection? Yeah. <laughs> and then it happened on my end. Okay, apologies, y'all. Meg, were you able to grab that? Okay, awesome. Well, I wanted to show you. 
I can't show off how fancy DocuSign is if they're having, I'm just making sure I didn't do anything wrong here, but I don't think I did because that's what you got to. I'm going to hit save and close and come back and see if I can maybe just restart it here. So I'm going to hit next. Nope. Okay. Apologies. One moment. No gonna... worries. And Erin put something funny in, in chat. She said this only happened because I asked the question. No, <laughs> no, but I, I like the, your comedy. I like your style. Um, yeah. <laughs> Haley, I'll go ahead and ask our product team just to say, hey, envelopes uh, is not letting us move forward and see what we hear. In the meantime, because I know we still have 15 minutes, I'm just going to jump to the next tip. And 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 I, I don't need an envelope for that. So I think we're in good hands there. And then I'll come back to correcting and voiding. Apologies, y'all. Okay. So in that circumstance, well, we're going to have a new circumstance. So I'm moving along my transaction. I'm getting things signed. And let's say that someone backs out. Okay. Someone backs out, unfortunately, and um, I need to organize. So the really the big takeaway here is if a contract falls through, please keep the same opportunity and the same DocuSign room. Um, you want to be able to track everything that happened with the transaction and keeping with the same opportunity is really going to allow y'all to do so. Um, so if someone maybe you've gotten to the point where they are under contract and let's say that you did have um, a couple of, I'm just going to add this in here just to show you all what it might look like. Let's say that you've gotten a couple of things signed. You're, you're, you're knee deep in this transaction essentially and something falls through. Maybe the buyer backs out. In that case, instead of coming here and removing which you, you can, but please don't, because we do want to keep all of that documentation, right? So in terms of giving yourself a clean placeholder to work with, what you'll want to do instead, and this is not intuitive, so that's why we're, we're just making sure we show y'all, is you're going to click whatever folder level you're in. So this under contract right here, right above that ad comment where you can reach out to your market center. And what you're going to do is click add version. So let's say... And this goes with our story earlier, maybe Meg backed out, Bian backed out, and um, Christy, so Renee Christie is going to be our buyer here. And maybe instead now you can come in and say, you know, Christy, Christy's transaction or Christy's, you know, under contract or whatever you want this to say essentially so that you know, even if you put new or something indicating that this is a new placeholder for now, all of Christy, our new deal. So I'm going to click create new version. Now notice I can toggle to that other version if I want to, if I go back to under contract, here's everything I had for my old transaction, but now I have a fresh checklist that I can do my new transaction with. Now from here, in terms of details changing or um, anything like that, remember you can go back to details. If any of this changed, you can update it. And then just remember to sync the transaction so that the new details go back into that DocuSign room. So that's what you're going to do on the command side. On the DocuSign side, maybe this is where you do lean on folders. So you'll come in here, you can say add folder, and uh, maybe deal fell through. You can put all of BN's paperwork in that folder and then use that new person. So let's see, I'm going to go through and say maybe her certification. Um, maybe her signed document here. Remember, there's no um, there's no need to bring in another fresh form because as long as you update those details and you change them, then those same forms are going to apply. So no need to create a new room, no need to create an opportunity. Does that make sense in terms of, hey, that's a lot quicker than creating those new pieces? And Haley, we got uh, KW Legacy just saying, hey, from an MC standpoint, we will have to see if our compliance team will be able to see the new version and I'll advise going forward. But from what I understood is that, yes, they should be able to. And what we can also highlight the add comment. So if you are going to a new checklist for a specific, whether it's the listed under contract closed, 
add comment right below there is going to be specific you talking to the MCA or compliance. You can add people in here. So you can be telling them, hey, I just had a buyer back out. I'm versioning out this checklist and I've made a new one titled X. Yes. Yes, Absolutely. That definitely as a market center, test it out. Make sure um, you guys are seeing that. Whoever is doing the compliance piece is really seeing all of that. Absolutely. Great point. We don't want to make it anything harder for our MCAs either. <laughs> okay. So that is, and let me just check real quick. Okay. Awesome. We will test it out and make sure we'll be, okay. Awesome. So we're going to cross our fingers and hold our breath. We're going to go back to our envelope. And I'm going to see if that is fixed now. Oh, I'm sorry. KW Legacy, do y'all have a question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Awesome. When the, a new version is created, if I go outside, if I log off that um, opportunity and then I come back to it, by default, is it the new version that that oh, stays question. there or which one is? It? Great question. Great question. Uh, that's definitely feedback that we've heard as of right now. No, sir, you would have to go manually pick that new uh, drop down checklist that you've created. That is feedback and, and we hear y'all. I, I don't want to make any promises. But that's definitely something that we've relayed in terms of ease of use for y'all. So you will have to come in here and recheck whatever checklist that you're working with as of right now. It will default to that other one. Okay, I'm going to see if we can um, show our correcting and voiding now. No. Okay, so correcting and voiding, it looks like we cannot showcase today, unfortunately. What we can do is um, we can send a recording of it to Davies. So because we've done a lot of these just showing that flow. Um, what we can also really do is just talk about basically when to do what. So because I can't show you all exactly what's going on here, um, normally when you, let's say I set up that envelope and I was, I sent it off and I needed to make a correction. So instead of this draft status and this completed status, you're going to see a blue bar that says waiting for others or needs my signature. Anytime you send off an envelope and you come back into this envelopes piece and you see a blue bar, that means you can correct it. Now, in terms of can versus should is where it gets a little hairy, and I would love to be able to demo that for y'all. But if you need to change pieces of information, such as the wrong email address, adding another signer, please go in and quickly just correct those envelopes. What's pretty cool is once you hit correct, none of the recipients are able to see the envelope. It basically freezes it so that they can't sign while you're correcting. So once you go and you see there's a yellow bar that says correcting, you know you're in a good spot. Now, in terms of the question that Aaron asked earlier, is signing fields. Sometimes a dollar amount changes after they sign it. What you can do is go back into that envelope and essentially add them as another recipient, maybe as the email address or something like that. Um, and then you would just have to manually because then it won't be a pre-tagged role. And I want to be able to show y'all. And I'm wondering if I can just say like, okay, let's see. Because I was even thinking of another workaround, and even in the in the instance that Aaron asked, is the envelope is going to be completed at that point, right? So that's not even a correction. That would be Harry and Haley signing the envelope, a change occurring, and us needing to change something on the envelope that they've already signed. So from there, um, you could essentially maybe you know copy that envelope, right, Meg, as a as a workaround for that, because then you could make the, and I don't think it's going to let me do it right now. There we go. And I, I'd still have to go back in there. Um, let me see. 
no, I'm so sorry. It's not going it, to explaining it. Unfortunately, is not going to be able to show what we'll do. Apologies, y'all is um, send over a recording and then maybe we'll do even a follow up um, or please email learn command or maybe Davies can have us back just for that piece of it. How are we feeling holistically between last session and today's in terms of what to do in DocuSign and when and all the tips that we went over today, whether that be in person, static data form templates? How are we feeling about what we've gone over today? Can you, sorry, can you do static form templates again for me? Just really quick, as far as once the template is created, where or how can the agent send it and then pull it back into the room? Absolutely. We, we got the creation part. It's just the, the rest of it. The using it, which is going to be very important. Um, so yes, of course. Let me go back here and make it out of the envelope. So sad. Okay. So We've already created it in my docs and it's going to be under that static data form template. Once you're in a room and I'm going to go into a different room because we've already applied it in the other one. I'm going to pick on Jude Law here make sure, and we'll see if I have it in here. Once you already have it created, if I click into documents and I find the form that I want to use. So we made one, remember, for our release of earnest money last time. So whatever form that is, you're going to right click the form and then you're going to click on apply form template. That's all you have to do to use it. What I was kind of explaining at the end there is now that I have the form template created, I can actually bring the form and the template in at the same time. So let me just go back to rooms and I'm just going to create a new room. And this isn't something that I know y'all are. This is just to show off this static data form template piece. So I'm going to hit save. Sorry, list side. Okay, so I'm in this fresh room. I've never brought in these documents before, but I already have a static data form template for that document and the pieces of information from transaction to transaction. So I'm going to go to my documents tab. I'm going to go into add pull in those DocuSign forms that I want to use. Because I've already created a template for release of earnest money, notice when I check on it, I have this new category that says template, and then I can bring it in with the form. Does that help? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Yay. We want to save y'all time. I love that y'all are um, wanting to use these. Yep. And even emailing into the room, you know, it's not because it's not something you're going to use all the time. You might, once you get to that point, be like, okay, what exactly was it again? You know, we do have, I would highly recommend, well, always email learn command at kw.com. That's a given. <laughs> but you also have, we joke that it is the Google for real estate agents, answers.kw.com. If you type in emailing into the room or DocuSign emailing, you will get an article that'll give you all of those kind of ways that you can do that as well. Um, but please reach out to us, us because I know that this can get a little vague once you get in the flow of working. Okay, just making sure I wasn't uh, missing anything in chat. Okay, so again, apologies for that correcting and voiding, but any other feed? Oh, sorry, Marianne? Um, yes, okay, so I'm wondering how um you upload documents onto commands like do they automatically sync between DocuSign and command or do you have to because I'm not like if I go to the opportunity um and then go to documents I don't see what you're seeing there where it says attach files from do you already have this opportunity connected to DocuSign? Like right here, does it say go to or start transaction? Yes, it does say go to transaction. And then it brings me to, yeah, it brings me to um, the documents there on DocuSign. But you don't have this attached files from? Attached files from, okay. Yes, I do Perfect. have that. 
And then you select DocuSign. Yes, and it should default to DocuSign once you make that connection. Um, okay. But if it doesn't, yeah, you'll just select. Mine always does though, so it should. And then from the working folder, that's when you can come and pick from any folders that you created in that. Okay. Room. Okay, I think I just needed to talk that through because no like the buttons are grayed out. So I think for me, I was thinking, oh, I can't select from that drop down. So I think that's. I just needed to talk that through. Well, that's great. You probably <laughs> helped so ten other people on the call doing that. So appreciate. I hope you. so. <laughs> Well, it has been a pleasure getting to train you all. Uh, I got to see y'all twice this week. Lucky me. Uh, please, please learn command at kw.com with any DocuSign questions or your market center representative. I know that um, they're wanting you to feel comfortable, um, you know, using these DocuSign tips and using that flow. And uh, we will find something for correcting and voiding and send it over to y'all so that you can see what exactly that looks like and go over a couple of those nuances. Thank you, Julissa. Appreciate you. If there are no further questions, uh, please enjoy the rest of your day. Appreciate you all uh, for coming and please email us with any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. And y'all are going to have a tech boot camp. That's so cool. Yes, we're going to be doing a lot of this DocuSign commands. It's an all-day class, but you have to register, so make sure you register. Mm -hmm. Love that. Get those yeah. registrations in, because that's going <laughs> to exactly. be fun. That's going to be fun right after FR, too. So, yeah, you're welcome, Joel. Thank you guys so much. And Thank you. Uh, as we said, we'll be sending the recording to your leadership members, and then they'll be distributing it from there. Oh, sorry, Aaron. I saw you talking. Were you trying to talk to us? No, I said much better today. Thanks. <laughs> Yay! I'm so glad. I know it can be it can be hard at first, and it is a little overwhelming. You have to kind of make it come to life. You're looking at a white screen, and you're like, ah. So uh, completely understandable, Aaron. <laughs>